Thank you. Treasures. Yeah, 11B is a good chair. Okay. If you don't attain the request to go to 11B to, yeah, 11B to talk about the bank and RFP. Yeah. 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 yeah, well, um, as you know, uh, we did a bank and RFP, and um, you have a uh, last meeting. We opened up the RFPs, and I've had a, a chance to review with our finance director, Monica Sees. And you should have a spreadsheet which uh, in your packet under treasurer, the treasurer file. And um, honestly, I think it's pretty much lays out that the choice is uh, to continue with Machias. That would be my recommendation. So I'm going to move to continue use of Machias Savings Bank for Hancock County's banking services for another three year term based on their response to the county's banking request for proposal. Thank the other responding and banking institutions for their respective proposals. Seconded. Any other discussion? We will follow this up with a with a once you find this decision with an email indicating similar sentiments that the that the commissioner expressed. So all those in favor? Aye. 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 You know, I think we have with the young lady in the fall again. To get through this quick and have to sit here all morning, you know. <laughs> I wonder this morning, but Commissioner, this is Faye Allen from Machai Savings. Thank you. Yeah. At least, at least it was riveting to have the testimony, right? <laughs> Actually, I used to live in Sedgwick, so it was really cool. Uh, so. uh, and we're a pretty good looking bunch. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. wow. This is the same as our best one. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is it. Yeah. Along with the barrel. Yeah. Yeah. For good. There's no, yeah. there's no uh, sarcasm in that statement. <laughs> <laughs> Not taken. Not taken. Yeah. So we're continuing indefinitely. Is that how this goes? Well, yes. this no. Yep. Yeah. Well, yeah. No. <laughs> no, I know it was for three, three, three years. years. Three, which is yeah. But, but I think in the agreement it allows it will allow for two individual years for a maximum of five, and after five years we'll have to repeat the process. Yeah. Unless something happens in between, but I certainly don't anticipate. Yes. Yeah. I think it would be it will continue to be successful. Well, and, and on the commission side, that's a responsible thing. To it do is. every three yes. years. Yes. Yes. Yeah. 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 Well, thank you very much. Thank you very Thanks much. Thanks for jumping ahead. Right. Thanks, babe. Do we want to finish the treasurer's report since we're um no, let's jump right i'd say go right back to the agenda yeah. stay on the okay. agenda with leroy right. and so tim tim and uh connery will wait patiently all right thank you thank you all right uh what do we have, what do we have uh, here at the airport today leroy? you wait oh yeah yeah i'm awake oh you've heard you're that right. sure yeah. <laughs> It, it has been a riveting morning here. Uh, based on, I don't know if you want to touch on anything or if you want to take questions. Yeah, go ahead, fire away. Well, the only thing I want to touch on is Todd. You know, I, I sat down just as you guys were finishing, and I just want to recognize him also for the work he does here. And it doesn't go unnoticed. He's he's always here. He's always finding something to do. He's he really cares about this airport. So I just wanted to throw that out. Thank you. Uh, can I go over right yeah, uh, You talk about getting reporting from uh, tire operators. Yeah. Yep. You know, for employment numbers. Yes. Uh, those have to be submitted, right? That's not something you can get from you know, like flight aware or something like that. Right, you're correct. Um, yesterday was my uh, diligence to to start on that. Actually, I I sent out I think twenty about twenty five emails to various operators, and it, and it paid out a little. I got two hundred and fifty seats, I think, or something like that, back just yesterday. So, um, you know, we'll. Um, continue to plug away at that it has to be on a specific form you know and they want it by they really didn't give much time they want it by the 18th i think it is but um so what i've done is ask the operators 
you know, what the, how many they got. And then I've done the best I can with the forms to just give it to them, let them fill it out. They can send it back to me. I'll submit it on their behalf. So they don't, so we don't take and waste a bunch of their time on it. I'm trying to make it as easy as they can. So they'll, so they will want to do it. Well, the reason I'm asking the question is because I don't fully understand what's an employment and what is it. It's got to be a commercial employment. Is that correct? Correct. A charter or a airline, and it's a each, let's call it a person paying passenger leaving the airport. So if you get into a charter flight, um, say you hired somebody to take, take you to uh, Portland. Yeah, um, that would be an employment. Okay, so, so, so the, site, the sightseeing flights don't count because they leave and return back at the same airport. That, that's that's exactly why I was asking. <laughs> I could kind of see where you was headed. <laughs> and, and and I was I was wondering about private employments, which I which I suspected were not in this number, but I just wanted to make sure. Right, and the other thing would be, you know, that it won't count i don't is your patient airlift and your angel flight to go yes. out here um because those are all non-profits yeah and so you know we'll, we'll we'll beat the beat the twigs and see what we can get you know we're we're quite a ways away but you know everyone everyone gets us a little closer and then your item f um uh, Columbia Air explained that they made some changes. Is that changes in services or changes in management? They've made some changes in personnel. Okay. No services. No services. We'll have a discussion. You know, they, they did reach out to me yesterday. They're talking they'd like to put in maybe another 10,000 gallon jet A tank. <laughs> um, no, another 20. 20,000 gallon jet A tank. And um, we'll, we'll, we'll have to have some discussions over that. Oh, I was, I was more interested in, in, in maintenance because I just, you know, hear from fellow. Right, right. And, 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 and quite frankly, that's where I it was admitting we'll have to have some discussions. You know, if they want to come in and put a 20,000 gallon jet A tank, they would like us to extend their lease another 10 years. Maybe it's time for us to ask something of them. Yeah. You know, that was, I, I didn't go down that road with them yesterday on the phone, but as I was plowing snow this morning, that had that little revelation that, you know, maybe, maybe it's time to ask them seriously on what they're going to do. Yeah, because, you know, as, as you know, I'm a small aircraft owner and, have a hangar on her at the airport and uh, not having maintenance facilities is a big deal. You know, like we have a we have you know a lot of based aircraft for an airport our size. Right. And you know it's just a crying shame to see them leave because they don't want to leave. It is it's an it's yeah. a missing important piece or an important piece that's missing right now. Yeah and, and considering you know we know what we know what was there before and what led to the changes but I think as Leroy alluded to, these changes that were discussed, I think, are positive changes towards maybe fixing a few of those issues. And, and I agree with Leroy's comment that yeah, it's time that the discussion is led so that both sides attain something out of this. Well, and I think you know, for for the county, what's in it is that part of having a viable airport mm -hmm. is having a full service airport, Pretty and much. that includes maintenance, fuel, and and you see. Over time, and you know, Bar Harbor is a little different, but not that different. Uh, you know, you see where airports lose services, their you know occupancy goes down, and and you know, therefore their revenue goes down. Therefore, you know, it, it just I hope I don't ever want Bar Harbor to get you know in that position. Right. Well, isn't it part of that attraction leads to employments? Yes, which that's, leads that's, to the money to basically keep it the jewel that it is. Yes, yeah. that's correct. Yeah. So with all that said, I'm going to move to accept the file airport manager's report as presented in his report dated February 18, 2022. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 
uh, with regards to your report, okay. you alphabetized each item on here and whatnot, but I noticed that H is missing and L is missing. I'm just curious. <laughs> well, I just did something <laughs> accidentally get deleted that you wanted to tell us or? No, no, <laughs> it, it was kind of a, a canned form in the in the program and apparently I missed some letters as I was I think it, I think the canned form goes a b c and then my alphabet and spelling from there is needs a whole lot to be desired well he's good with numbers the letters he's having trouble with. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't mean to be critical I just hoping just want to make sure that you didn't try probably. to tell us something we missed yeah probably yeah. Something. Yeah. Is, that, is that everything they write yeah that's all I had all right. Thank you for the entertainment. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I'm here for. <laughs> All right, now we're moving on to the jail and town. Two quick things. Um, Professor Pruel, the highest should know right. The vote is back on the office officer of step A, effective March 12th, 2022. Step 9A. Nine A. Nine A. So, so moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Second thing is request approval for corrections officer Robert, Robert Lissy on uh, classification as corporal. So moved as requested. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 And the last thing request approval of the 2022 contract with Chelsea Howard, a family nurse practitioner that works in the jail for arrangements for medical services for the Hancock County Jail. Move to approve and authorize the chair to sign. The 2022 agreement for medical services provided to the Hancock County Jail contract with Chelsea Howard, FNP, as presented and beginning March 1, 2022. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you very much. Are you reviewing those bills on the estimates yourself or is it Dennis? Dennis is that bill. He's going to be taken care of. Thank you. Yeah, for you. And Chuck and Charlie will start with the camera system. So you're not going to have anything coming back to us today? No, no. We're thinking hopefully the next meeting we're going to be able to sit down. Yeah, this right. Yeah, this may have the duck bill to come back this afternoon. Yeah, okay. Later today. Thank you. Thank you. All right. RCC. Hi, Bob. Good morning. Just to remind you, that that duck work was intended to come out of our our own. Morning. 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 A busy month. Yeah. A uh, couple of items are a little complicated, but uh, one of the big ones is uh, we had uh, my item three, uh, our ongoing EMS debacle around the county. Uh, the ramp at the ferry terminal on Swans Island was broke. So they were limited to ferry, running the ferry when the tide was high. So that ended up creating quite a situation for any medical nurses. So we had a big meeting, uh, kind of tasked, I kind of tasked Andrew Braley on his pretty much last day of, uh, because he's also Swan's Island. Uh, I mean, I'm sorry, Southwest Harbor's EMS chief, like, what are we gonna do with this? So, the, so he got all the players together. We, we came up with a plan. It wasn't perfect, but we involved the Coast Guard, we involved uh, the uh, Southwest Harbor Police Department Dispatch. We came up with a plan on how we were going to get EMS services up to the island for serious and critical patients. Um, all that was weather dependent, of course, between life light and uh, the boats. So they, they looked at it, it was going to be approximately an hour or two hours to get somebody out there to transport somebody out the island. Uh, fortunately, I don't believe we had any issues. Um, they have since got the ferry fixed. The, the ferry was also broken that day, so they weren't even running the ferry day or two. Uh, they had that all back, so we're back to the normal scrambling to try to get some get there with the ferry and all that. So uh, I'm not sure if you're aware the ferry service no longer just jumps to call their application. Um, you know, the main DOT said, eh, we're not going to do that anymore. So we still rely on life a lot to go out there, uh, and which is very expensive to work. You, know, you, get, you break your knee, you know, you fly off and wait a day or two to get on. So that's kind of, and if you fly off, you know, you're talking at least 10,000 on bill. Probably more. So. Yeah, it really wasn't our really wasn't our sub problem to solve. However, in our best interest is we had a plan at the time to figure out 
why. So, um, so kudos to, to Andrew for, for putting that together and, and all the people there who are very cooperative. So, um, I have a question on that very item because I've been in Coast Guard Aviation a long, long time ago. It seems like yesterday. But, uh, I was involved in flying people off Swans Island on one or two occasions. Is that not in the cars now? And like, I remember, light flight didn't exist then. Well, I think I don't know. That would be kind of a Coast Guard answer. I mean, I know we've had the Coast Guard come into the Bar Harbor Airport or on, on the middle of the night when we just picked up two fish and landing. Yeah. Well, and nobody's there. We're still landing. Yeah. All kind of thing. I, I don't really know. That, that didn't come into effect. We did have a couple of gentlemen from the Coast Guard station that were there that never really brought that up. So. And that's a good point. I don't know. Well, what fixed wing or helicopter? helicopter. And, and the reason I bring it up is because, you know, a station like Southwest Harbor wouldn't necessarily know that. But, you know, no. and they're all dispatched out of an RCC in, in Boston. You know, they, they, Boston covers this area, right. District right. 1. So, you know, I wonder if. And I really hadn't thought of that until I read this. Well, that's, that's good question. I hadn't thought about it either. Because that that is a that's a huge asset, or it used to be an asset. Uh, and you know, everything comes out of any airplane, Coast Guard aircraft, whether it's fixed wing or, or rotary, comes out of Cape Cod, which is really not, not that far. It's, it's not that far. It's, I mean, we used to do it all the time, like two or three times a week. So. Um, you know, it's an hour, not even through. We can certainly inquire, see what the what and, and that may have all changed since since life flight. You know, I, I don't know. Well, and the issue, right? You know, with life flight is they've got three helicopters that cover the entire state, and usually when you really need them, they're coming from Sanford because that's the closest. Well, that, that, conversely, the Coast Guard has four, maybe five, based on Cape Cod, and they go from Long Island to the Canadian border. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, the other one of the other issues of uh, the, the Blue Nose fire in Bar Harbor uh, that was a massive incident. I actually left from here and went to my fire department. Uh, actually, quite some fire, it's kind, of, kind of fun, uh, but it was it was a very complicated issue. Uh, we had several several dispatch agencies involved, plus dispatch agencies from out of the, the county. Uh, the, uh, the fire department uh, needed a lot of folks, so they were reaching out, they were coordinating with DMA, which rightly so with us a bit. Uh, we also had a lot of resources that were tied up throughout the county yes. uh, that our folks had a, had a hard time to keep track of. We actually had assets sitting at Lucerne that we weren't aware of until the following day on a Facebook post from the fire department that all these fire departments are standing by and lose your hand. Uh, so we, we're working on trying to get a, a little better grip on what they need. Uh, and it's no offense to the island. I mean, they had a big, they had a big incident. Um, their fourth alarm call is basically called the RCC to the county coordinator. And that's that kind of that failed. Uh, we have had a conversation with the county coordinator through the fire association. Um, I, I won't comment on that other than you know, we were, we're working on with the fire association, mm -hmm. also the district coordinator. So I'm, I'm supposed to get the phone call when he gets the phone call that, hey, can you round up 10 guys from your district? Uh, and that didn't happen. But our folks down there recognized they weren't getting communication. So they put all of the area, all the local fire departments on standby, go to your station, standby for construction, uh, which worked out pretty well. So is that because there's more than one RCC involved when they reach out? Because I've heard that there are incidents, and I can't remember whether it was by Harbor or here, that when there are incidents in the county, that Folks from Penobscot County come and well, this, this happened this particular time. There are there are a few events like that. We get a fire in Dedham, but we don't dispatch Dedham because they've gone to Penobscot RCC. But they do at times if other departments will come down. I mean, Orland, we get Warrington a lot of times, they'll come down. We get Holden that will come down. Um, the calls. Uh, the coordination is you know, we all don't share CADs, so we all can't see what each other are doing. Yeah. Uh, it gets complicated because we have five standalone dispatch agencies in the county as well that are doing their own thing. You know, that's that's their right. Uh, the, the coordination between dispatch agencies is what exactly you need. Uh, because, you know, as a volunteer fire, you, you bring the valve and tell me you want me to go for a fire. I'll either bring everything or you tell me what you need. 
and which everybody brought everything. So it was it was a lot of equipment. I, I'm guessing it was probably a couple hundred thousand or a couple hundred million dollars worth of equipment sitting on Eden Street by mm -hmm. College Atlantic, ours included, uh, for this. Uh, but the the, other, the, side, the side of it is they they haven't actually had their after action report yet to talk about what went well and, and what didn't go well. It just seemed like at one point there was you had, you had the fire chief was battling the fire with the agencies, and the deputy chief was looking at well, these people. people. And by the time that we got down, uh, there was probably 50 people standing around ready to go to work. Like, got anything else for us to do? We'd like to go back and cover the side of the county. So that we're working on that for better fire coverage. What would, uh, because um, we all, each RCC has a, a CAD system mm -hmm. and they don't talk to each other. Correct. Yes. Yeah, is there, and that's basically done through um, what's the dispatch software? Oh, so, well, we use Spillman. Spillman. We use yeah. Spillman. Yeah. yeah, Spillman. Yeah. Is there, and, and, and I know in Bar Harbor, we were always talking about how how useful it was for everybody to be on <laughs> the same system. And it, it, it is helpful within the county most yeah. of the time. So, uh, but it just, you know, I, I don't want to belabor it, but as you get, you know, you've got an entity that is in charge of their incident using their dispatcher, and they actually brought a dispatcher to the scene, that was sitting in the chief's vehicle, working, doing the documentation there. Uh, the, the, the the issue, I guess, the issue, I don't know about the issue, because it worked out, uh, was that it was just not, it was different lines of communications going different places, so that at one point, I mean, we got sent to Ellsworth because they didn't know anybody was there. Because it wasn't any communication until later, people were just kind of doing their, you know, so their thing. So I, I don't getting everybody on the same system or systems talking really would. Um, well, again, you you every every agency has their CAD stream, so the, the agencies that they work with. The RCC, we have twenty five fire departments that we dispatch for, so we have units. You got to scroll up and down and see who's there and all of these comments. So it wasn't, my, I've always kind of said, why don't we all work off the same incident on the CAD? So we don't have, you know, you know, Bucksport's got a fire card for Bucksport Fire Department that's going to Bar Harbor and RCC has you know, 12 fire departments on their CAD and then Southwest has their fire department on their CAD. And why can't we all work? I find that very useful as a fire chief because I can go back and I'm, if I'm rendered mutual aid, I have, the, I have the advantage of seeing Spillman because I work here. But if I don't, I don't know what the incident number is for the department that I'm going to, to help when I do my, my state report later. Um, so that would have been helpful. However, it, it gets very cluttered very fast. When you put every, we have the ability to put everybody on the cat, our C1 cat, but then you've got, you know, you've got strong things. So I think so. But, but our folks did a great job, I think, with, uh, you know, all in all, trying to keep track of where everybody was going and putting people where they needed to be. When they when they knew what the request was, but it did get it was a very big incident that it was probably had a lot more people that probably needed. But they went, you know, we always say go big early. You know, we always turn people around. I think they just forgot to turn people around because they were so busy. And a few big incidents there. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it sure has. Uh, yeah, it was, it was, it was quite sort of there. haunted or cursed or yeah, yeah. something. Yeah, uh, and the only other thing I really had uh, just briefly. Uh, because I still don't completely, un I don't think anybody completely understands it. it's this crisis management, the 911. It, they, the, the, the Public Utilities Commission released a 38 page report that I, that I went through it. And the long story short is the state legislature says we're going to have this 988 number, we're going to have crisis management, we're going to have, you know, dispatch agencies, we're going to have this band of people that are going to provide mental health services and social services uh, for people that need it when they call this number. And that's basically where it lies is there's no real there's no national standard for this there's no national program you know the only national part is, is they said yeah we're going to make eight eight nine eight eighty national number so if you're having a bad day that you don't need a police officer and once you just want to talk to somebody get those three numbers and we'll go somewhere but they haven't funded uh, no, like, there's no yeah there's no funding yet yeah, there's more no, importantly it won't be funded yeah, no, so they uh, just created it. Which... Well, and there's no there's no infrastructure for it. There's no uh, you know we I, I participated in a working group when they first mentioned it. Say, oh, by the way, let's just approve this. We're going to do this, and we need your input. Uh, and they took you know the eight piece out, eight of the piece out, eight out of twenty four piece out. So we were 
invited to participate, which he did. Uh, there was a lot of issues like, you know, what's the liability to the dispatcher? What's the liability to the agency, the county that, you know, we're not mental health professionals. Yeah, we have a protocol that we can follow that's very, very generic. But and even if you had a professional, what's the liability to the professional? Well, and that was a lot of the questions as well is, you know, we go through that there's nothing, there's no screening process that's been put out there that for our dispatchers to go, oh, yeah, this person doesn't need an ambulance, this person doesn't get it. We're going to send it off to this person, and then they, you know, then they have the ability to send it back if they realize that Jesus guy's really, you know, the poor girl needs, you know, an ambulance and a cop because, you know, they're, they have an accident, they're getting ready to kill their family. They didn't tell the original person, but there's no mechanism to really bring that back and process all that. And, you know, there's no, I mean, our stuff's recorded, there's no record. I mean, it's just a mess. So I don't know what they're going to do. I mean, the only, their solution was, well, we have emergency medical protocols with behavioral problems like you know psychiatric problems and they have a little bit of a sidebar program that they can attach to that uh, but it doesn't it doesn't meet any of the i just have no idea what they're do. i mean they don't even have a staff yet for, you know. well so i think you know, nine eight eight right now is it go that doesn't go anywhere. but but as i mean in july nine eight eight will it'll go somewhere but i don't know what that's going to be yet either i don't think they know no they haven't figured that part no, out there's a lot of it they haven't figured out they said we're going to do this the only thing they've done is is created a, a number that goes on nowhere yeah. in So far. Let's go somewhere. Probably it'll we'll probably ring in a nine one temporarily. But uh, you know, so we we've raised a lot of concerns over the uh, there was there was a standalone dispatch agencies and police departments, EMS agencies, all players that you know, these are the, you know, this is what we deal with right now. How are we gonna do this? And they don't really know. Well look at uh, to me. You look at the call volume, you sent an updated, you know, so we should work from that. Call volume's going up. Right. Yeah, we you know, you start things. throwing this in it, not only is, is call volume going to go up, but you got to figure out where the call is going to go. Yeah. Now we and now we know. Yeah. And you're talking a completely different set of resources. I mean, the, right. the intensive training, again, to cover the liability to provide <laughs> adequate services is extreme. I mean, you're talking about people that go to school. For, I mean, you're talking about therapists, really. You know, somebody's gone to school for several years, um, and but, not, and and not every. I mean, maybe some dispatchers can acclimate to this, but not every dispatch is going to be able to. Their natural reaction is to receive a call and take action. They are not to not necessarily talk to people, talk people down, or talk. They're used to taking control of an emergency situation, but that's completely different. And uh, I mean, yeah. yeah, I mean, they've got they've got a again. There's a kind of sidebar program that's. Already attached to the EMD program that we use. We just don't, the state hasn't bought that. So they, they're talking about at least buying that, providing training. It's a three day class, like everything else is. But, uh, you know, and, and you know, they, they say right now, well, we won't QA that. So that won't be an additional QA requirement that will fall under the medical. So where are you going to get the P? I mean, we can't yeah. get exactly. to yeah. staff what we no, have. No. I know. And it's, and it's, it's getting busier and busier. Yeah. Oh, I think this is so typical. I mean, years ago they decriminalized intoxication. And what uh, the idea that they're gonna set up treatment facilities. Treatment facility turned out to be the jail. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, well, it's mental health. Mental health. Mental health. Mental health. Mental health. Mental health facilities yes. were not gonna treat them and whatnot. Yeah. They end up going to jail. I mean, yeah. so that's well we take them to the ER and the ER releases them because we're kind of fine. And then you know, six hours later we're back there dealing with them again because they didn't. They, they said the right, they met the check, you know, they said the right things with their to get out of the ER. So I don't, I don't know, I don't know where this is going to go. And, and, and. Why did the, why were those January numbers so high in your calls? Uh, I think we had a real big surge in COVID people that were calling. With, um, medical, you know, we had a ton of medical calls where they, you know, they were just curious. COVID calls are not it's feeling always well. been going up, but that was like a, yeah, no, it, that, I looked at it going, geez, that seems pretty high. And I think a lot of it was uh, some of that, you know, requests for ambulances. Really, I mean, we had days where we got a whole time. I was like, there's a lot more people around. There seems to be a lot know, more On the island, I, I feel like there's a lot more. What do you get around residents? Like, like I don't think people went home. I mean, yeah. they stayed around like they did last year, and that's where our numbers were higher last year. And our, our numbers this year were. 2021 were higher than ever. Ever. I mean, it was just it was crazy. Also, yeah. so, 
had that good mean winter to kind of steer them back. Well, I think I think we're working on it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna move. Oh, I mean, no. Nope. I'm gonna move to accept the file RCC director's report as presented. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you, Rob. Oh, thank you, Good morning, gents. Good morning. Uh, first, questions regarding the monthly report. I'm going to move to accept the file of facility directors for as dated uh, and presented as, excuse, as presented in his memo dated. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you, <clears throat> Item B, propane contract. As you know, we've approved uh, going out to bids for propane service, but uh, uh, with an eye on energy markets the way they are, and uh, in discussions with Scott, we, we thought maybe we'd reach out to the vendor and see if they extend us another year under the same terms. And initially, I got a no answer. They had a new, a different cost matrix they're using, which at the time would have made the price that we were paying, which is uh, 170 or so, 195. So about a 5% increase is what we saw. But then within an hour, a regional salesman called me back from Bangor and said they would extend the same terms. So, uh, and I just felt it'd be remiss if I didn't try to do this given the volatility of energy markets at this time. Um, so there is that uh, we have a commitment of writing to extend the terms of this pricing matrix, which is uh, 0.48 cents over the Fort Bellevue cost figure, which is the East Coast cost figure for propane supply. That we enjoy today, they would extend it for another year so, until May 1, 23. So I'm going to move to approve a one year extension to the current propane contract with Dead River is recommended. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, C, uh, Chair's Office Ramp Update. Don't have much in the way of design, although I can tell you. Uh, seen them just been over here a number of times. We've opened up the sewer hatches down below, and and hopefully he's getting the information that he wanted. But the last time he addressed the board, I believe Commissioner Clark asked him about the snow melt, and it was an electric system. And I had told him that my preference is a hydronic system, which we already have, and works well. And I think he went with the low hanging fruit. And skip right over it. So I asked him again, following up on it, and he said that there may be a $2,500 increase in design fees to include a hydronic option for us uh, as opposed to just an electrical option. And here's my reason for this is that we have from our steam boiler an abundance, uh, even to a degree of wastefulness. If you've ever been down in the basement area when that steam boiler is running, it's is we have heat energy uh, to a degree that um, it's almost foolish to not harness it. Uh, and this would be steam that creates a hot water. And we could come off this hot water loop and melt that snow for virtually no operating cost. Whereas um, an electric system would require a new switch gear require at least an additional panel to be run, uh, maybe two and some, and a, a whole different myriad of controls that uh, would put us in the, the electric game for snow melting. And last month we had the highest electric bill we've ever had in, in my tanker, which probably is uh, the highest bill we ever had here. And it's not gonna go down. Yeah, well, we're going to see some relief, but I mean, can you say the futures are, are going to be no, no, not for the, not in the near future? So, what do you think we need to encourage 
might to, to, to hydronics. Uh, he said he would he would do that, and I spoke with the engineer who says he designs both. Yeah. But it's this twenty five hundred dollars extra, which may or may not uh, materialize based on the fact that the the last figure design figure we approved. I don't think he used all of those funds either. So uh, what I would request from the board is uh, is uh, uh, an additional amount of twenty five hundred dollars should it become necessary. Yeah, and when Dennis and I talked about this, and because I, I missed a, I missed the conversation between he and the and the engineer, so I asked Dennis about why Sealander was addressing this again, and he felt very strongly about the hydronic setup. So I said, well, let's run it through the commission and see if anybody objects. Um, and, and I think it's. Uh, you know, got to go with Dennis's instinct, and I agree with the electrical. So the action you need from us is to approve an additional twenty five hundred for design fees. Yes. So, second. So, I'm kind of remember the discussion a little bit because I kind of feel like what was uh, Mike's hesitancy about. Using hydronics because I feel like there was one. I feel like there's an elevation. Like he, did, he did say that uh, a hydronic system might have air gaps or or uh, right. problems below the surface of the of the uh, treated area, freezing, leaking, and all those kinds. But of course, the same conditions exist for electric service under you know two or three inches under that surface as well. So and when faced with that rebuttal, he agreed, yes, that's true, but uh, we, have, was, we have hydraulics right now. We, we do. do. We have any issues with it? No. After it's set up correctly, and this is a thing that I is not engineered. I called it together myself with a outdoor boiler heat exchanger. Very, you know, uh, it's a little overkill, but it works like a charm, five below zero. So, okay, so my motion is actually it's moved to authorize a $2,500 increase in the Sealander design uh, design contract if needed as requested. I second that. Is that, is that English okay? Yeah. I don't need to be more specific. All those in favor? Aye. 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 So we, we still have a problem with the drop off or the handicap section. Did Mike bring that up again? He, he, he did when we talked about it and uh, explained that it's, it's just very, just a demarcation. You're talking about where you pull into the slot and there's that. To the, to the left when you get to regular park. Yes, there's you that. Said, drawer to make that look like a 60 inch drawer. Uh, yeah, I think originally it was. Right. So, so, but that's been amended to. Is it? I get that it's small, but I guess I'm just like imagining to me like something that's the kind of thing that the church has. Yeah. And yeah. it's also the thing like the plow. How's this? Yeah, the plow I brought gonna, the same thing up. Plow so plow's going the other way, right? So and, just, and why does he think it needs any? I mean, if you can get yeah. it down to less than yeah. an inch, why does it need any? Yeah, good. Yeah. Great point. Right. I, and I couldn't yeah. agree more. My suggestion was to roll it off the pavement and put paint on it. It, it really should be feathered at the very least. It's got to have something. He's, I, I questioned him and he sent me an email. I can look it up, forward it to you. Something with the drives I, I identifying and separate, and I'm like, that just that doesn't make sense to me. But, Painted. Um, I agree. Exactly. That was my suggestion. Painted. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, you get after me because yeah. I think, you know, that's, I just want it to be practically practical. So that one well, doesn't screw up a yeah. plow and take care of it, and well, it's not yeah, like this whole thing where people keep twisting their ankle on right. or stubbing their toe and falling head first into yeah. their. Uh, well, like these well, cord, you know, they're really up with the plow. Yeah. yeah. Or tear the plow. Yeah. 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 I'm still worried. Uh, I'll be uh, uh, dropping your wheelchair, you know, if we can't get back out, yeah. just enough to yeah. trick your own. Yeah, it, it, it doesn't make sense. But. Yeah. The argument in favor did not seem that compelling to me either. Because we don't, it doesn't seem like we have enough issues now. We should hold us up much longer. We should be getting up to bed. This is Agreed. a bridge. So, all right. Let's and see. so he did say he probably will have something for us by mid month. I'll send this off to him again. Tell me, tell me I need to include these two items. 
I will. All right, and did, we, uh, did you review the duct cleaning? Uh, I did. And uh, this is uh, exactly what we asked for. And there are a couple of points here that uh, I bring to your attention before making the recommendation. And uh, uh, it includes the registers, which are a, a big problem up in the jail. Those are the diffusers that sit on the wall. They fill them with plaster. They make their own plaster. And it's disgusting. But those we cleaned, reconditioned, replaced if necessary. Uh, yeah, uh, and, and then they sure complain they have no need. They blocked it. But that's a, a different uh, subject. The sealing of all hatches where they access the ductwork, they're going to seal it back up correctly. Uh, it, it'll all be done under negative pressure. In other words, they've got like a vacuum and the duct only toward it. So nothing gets, you know, expressed into the space or into the, the foils. And uh, the, the one item that gave me pause, which I think is very workable from our standpoint, is the prices for regular hours, like uh, uh, not no nights and weekends. And if we decided that that were necessary, I think they would do it, but there would be an additional cost. And of course, you'd be made aware of that. What's, what's Tim say? Well, in advance. Uh, Tim likes them. They did the demand the for us yeah. just weekdays. Yeah, uh, it's he Probably prefers weekdays because we he has he has most staffing. Right. Okay. So it makes sense. So for this, him. this that shouldn't be an issue for him. No, it really shouldn't. I mean, it's outside. Something happens where we need to. Clear someone out, or, or we, you know, I can't imagine. Oh, okay. Well, we would approach that situation. Right. You mean you know it well in advance? Okay. I think. Can we get? Is there any way that we can get, like, a some before pictures so that we can understand yeah, the not, job, yeah. the job? I, I remember went through and, and, and see and afterwards, like before each. and after. Okay. Yeah. It's always nice sure to see how yeah. see what what we're addressing and what we're what the fix looks like. And this was the only bid we got this day. Only bid, yeah. Mm -hmm. And these folks also did the Kenosha County Jail. Yes. Yeah. I guess. You ready, Paul? Yeah. I'm going to move to award Penobscot cleaning and duct cleaning contract in the amount of $22,256 to, to be paid from ARPA funds as recommended. And that is the recommendation, right? It is. Yep. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you, Dennis. That's great, gentlemen. I'll get this underway and uh, I'll keep you posted with respect to progress. And again, the most challenging thing will be working with the jail's uh, availability for these pods. And there they are. Yeah. And they should, yeah, they should be familiar with that they, vendor because yeah. they've been in there plenty of times. So, right. Yeah. Yeah, it's a known vendor. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Uh, Chair, if I could, before we move on, I see Carrie Lewis, uh, who is from TD Bank. Thanks, so. And maybe Carrie, can you hear us? Sorry, I want to take it off mute. Yes, I can. Yeah, um, Carrie, we we have addressed the RFP, which was awarded to Machias earlier. Um, oh, okay. Basically, just we we took it out of order. It, it it seemed to fit in with what was going on currently. And I apologize for that, but I had I don't know I don't know if you've been on there long. I hope not very long because I just happened to notice your your name up there. No, no, unfortunately, I had morning appointments, so I got on towards the end. Um, so okay. thank you for that update. I appreciate that. Yeah, and, and thank you for your submission, and we'll we'll be in in touch to, to kind of finalize things um, today or tomorrow. Okay, thank you. Okay. Yep. Thank you. Okay, I'm going to move to approve the monthly bills and warrants as presented. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Anything else for treasure? Okay. Is that original up here? Yeah. Warrant memo. Yeah, I have it. Oh. Something else? Oh, yeah, the jail union contract. Uh, yep. Yep. 
I vote to sign a collective bargaining agreement between Hancock County and Teamsters Union Local 340 for the jail unit for the period starting January 1, 2022 through December 31st, 2024, as presented. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 You should have, I think, three copies there. Yeah. Coley signed. Yeah, his. Yeah, those are his originals that, that he set up. So the better I'm seeing. Okay. These are just copies, right? Yeah. 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 Yeah, John has the, the three original. Was it three of them, John? I think it's just two. Just two? Okay. Yeah, I only saw two sign sheets. Usually he says three and it seems kind of thick, but okay. Um, yeah, if you wanted to, if you wanted a copy of it, I think that's why I had no. them give you a copy. Sometimes the commission is like to keep a copy on hand. Of you, but, yeah. 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 I just put it in my meeting book. That uh, fine. Okay. Whoever it's really for your access, just just so you have a copy. And you need yes, you need to sign all three. Guys. Yeah, what I'll do is send send him back a copy, and then we put the our original on record, and then uh, copies are kept downstairs amongst us. You want a better clip? Better clip. Yeah, it's actually really long too. I guess it was long too. Yeah. Okay, so we're item B. Yeah, basically, um, sort of after the fact when we talk about retro, um, of course, the part timers were still getting the old rate until the contract was negotiated and signed. So just basically questioning the commission as to whether your intent is to offer retro to the back to the first of the year, like we did with the uh, union personnel, with the part time personnel. And the total for that is around 800 bucks. I would yes. say yes. I, I think retention and goodwill it would be money well spent. Yeah. So, well, in fairness, and uh, I think it's consistent with policy. Yeah. Policy says you'll get this when it becomes effective, and it's effective January first. Well, yeah, but they're not unions. So. I know it. Oh, the policy okay. for signing the part time rate is always going to be. So, okay, yeah, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not gonna, yeah, I agree. Yeah, so, I agree with making that happen. So, so you need some action. Move to uh, approve retro part time. For this is for for non union. Just for part time um, jail, jail personnel right. would be appropriate. Yeah. For for part time jail personnel. Mm -hmm. yep. So back to January first. Uh, effective January first. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Good. Thank you. And then the next meetings I have are March 15th, April 5th, and April 20th is a Wednesday due to Patriot's Day. Well, that's the only Wednesday. Yes, the other two are Tuesdays. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Yes. March 15th is a Tuesday, April 5th is a Tuesday, and April 20th is a Wednesday. I just take action. It's just, a, they're just, yep. Telling us really just to, yeah, they're just kind of. Really, so if we have an odd one like the Wednesday, we would kind of announce that ahead of time. Move to adjourn. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.
Sorry. <laughs> 